Oh yeah, here we go. First impressions of the Nike React Infinity Run Fly Knits. Uh, this is not my full review. You all know the drill. After 50 miles, we'll get you the full review. And that's a little tip of the day. Make sure the YouTube channels that are doing running shoe reviews that you're watching, that they are stating how many miles or kilometers they put into the shoes before giving their uh, first impressions or full reviews. For me, obviously first impression is right out of the box like you saw inside the house. I'm going out for a three mile run uh, to test these shoes out, but then the full reviews, I like to do 50 miles, some channels do 100 miles. Anyway, just a little tip, listen for that mileage or kilometer mark. Okay, here's the deal. I'm not a big React guy. I haven't run that much in React in the past as far as that midsole foam, but I'm listening to all of you. I think it was Twitter especially this time. Folks that just are interested in the shoe in 2020, the Nike React Infinity Run Flying It. A little bit of a mouthful, Nike, just so you know. And uh, so I decided to pull the trigger and buy this and give it a shot. So that's where we're off to. Give it a, give it a run and onward and upward. Here we go. go Nike react infinity run flying it first impression let's go break it down in the studio onward and upward here we go welcome to the studio and yes new configuration in the studio just for tonight the construction is still happening not quite ready to reveal I will reveal to you in tomorrow's vlog as much as I get done tomorrow okay no matter what's done because I can't I just got to show it to you guys I think you're gonna like the new fresh look here in the studio. Okay, let's dive in to the Nike React Infinity Run Fly Knit. There it is on the wall. Here it is as well. It's a neutral road running shoe from Nike with some stability features built in, into the shoe. For example, what I already noticed, and I confirmed it today after a little research inside, uh, I confirmed it that the, the outsole is in fact a little wider than the Nike Epic React from 2019, the previous iteration of this shoe. And I noticed it immediately as I was going through the gate cycle today. So that's one feature that turns this neutral shoe into a stability-esque type shoe. In addition, this rubberized plastic, that's it's gr this gray bar, I think it's pink on the ladies version. It wraps around the heel counter here, heel counter here, and it also provides a little more stability, stability through your heel, okay? Now, let's dive into a couple specs real quick. Nine millimeter drop, so 30 millimeter stack height in the heel, 21 in the forefoot, so that's a little more midsole foam compared to 2019, and a lot of people are already raving about that. Uh, also, 10.2 ounces, or in men's size nine, 10.2 ounces, and there it is in grams on your screen. So um, it did lose a little bit of weight from 2019, and probably why is because of the upper. This upper is supposed to be stronger, uh, more durable, and yes, lighter. And frankly, I'm pretty excited, everybody. I'm pretty excited about this fly knit right, right here through the toe box. I just feel, and you guess, you, you remember the shoes from 2019 that were scrunching up in the toe box for me? I'm not seeing any scrunching up through this toe box. I really appreciate that because when you get scrunching increases through the toe box, that's what can cause blisters on the top of your feet. No dice. So it's looking good. Okay, only drawback thus far is 
the collar of the shoe. It's that booty style collar. So what does that mean? It's basically a little more flimsy, a little more loosey goosey. It's like, it's not as rigid as some other shoes on the market. I'm not excited. I'm not excited at all. In fact, I don't know what I'm going to do to try and fix that uh, moving forward because my ankle now by the end of the three mile run today, by the way, three miles, I think I was right about 830 a mile. There it is on your screen. Not, you know, just bopping along, having a good time out there in the sun. And I could, uh, by the end of the run, I did forget about the collar ish issue. Okay. Not a major issue, but uh, I just prefer a little more lockdown around my ankle so that I know I'm not gonna fly out of the shoe, okay? All right, moving on to that midsole. Here we go, it's that React midsole foam. Yes, they added more midsole stack height from 2019, and I noticed it immediately. Um, definitely a more cushioned ride from 2019, and that's probably because they got a lot of feedback. I just didn't, I, would, I did not love the Epic React from 2019. It just felt a little too stiff. This did not, it was, it was kind of spot on, actually. The, the ride of the shoe felt very, very stabilized and comfortable and um, pretty smooth. But it just, uh, yeah, it just, it was a nice, it wasn't too cushioned, not, not too much cushion and just firm enough. So anyway, I really enjoyed the ride of the midsole. Okay, moving on to the outsole. Yes, they increased the rubber on the outsole by quite a bit. In fact, if you can look up pictures of the Epic React, like the midsole or yeah, the midfoot basically doesn't have any of this external rubber that increases the durability of the shoe, increases the lifespan of the shoe. So again, I'm sure they listen to everybody, give them feedback saying, hey, this shoe is great, but it's breaking down really quickly. So I think it's a good update as far as the outsole goes on the Nike React Infinity Run flying it with that outsole there. And how will I use the React Infinity Run moving forward? It's definitely not a high performance shoe, okay? It's not designed to go fast. I would never take this out on a tempo day or a threshold day. It's just, uh, gosh, why? I mean, it is light. Um, it didn't feel snappy. I will say that much. Like it didn't feel snappy through the gate cycle. Um, and, and at the end of the day, if I was to go 6.30 a mile or six minutes a mile in the shoe, I would feel so afraid that my heel would be popping out of the shoe. Like that's how much I'm just not, I'm just struggling with that collar of the shoe. So it's not, it's a nice, easy day shoe. You know what this is perfect for? Go to the gym, do your weightlifting, do your core work, do your stretching, and then go out and run three to six miles without having to change shoes from the gym to the run, okay? perfect shoe for that. I can tell it, maybe it'll change by 50 miles. You stay tuned, but, but for now, that's what I'm sticking with, with the React Infinity Run. Okay, two more quick points before we get to that question of the day is that the price point is $160. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. I just don't see it, Nike. I'm thinking like 130, 135 at the most. I'm just like this, that's a, that's a high price point in my opinion, especially if I'm gonna be using this for an easy day shoe, maybe. If you end up getting this shoe and you use it for faster workouts, let me know. I'll be curious to hear, and maybe I'll take it up to higher speeds in the next 50 miles. But okay, that's the price point. And then they did do, Nike did a cross comparison between the Nike Structure 22 and the Infinity Run. And I guess the Infinity Run injury rates were quite a bit lower, significantly lower than the Structure 22. So anyway, can't take that for what it is. Um, it was a study done by Nike as far as reducing Injuries, question of the day. What is your go-to easy day shoe right now and why? Okay, that's it, that's it. Thanks for watching this first impression of the Nike React Infinity Run Flyknit, okay? We shall see, come back for that full review in about 47 miles. All right, everyone, we're gonna toss it back to the Nike running shoe review playlist on the right. That'll be the square there on the right. And then on the left, we'll toss it back to the Zoom Fly 3 full review from 2019. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. All right, see beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.